please tell us, the listeners, everybody we've been teasing for the last day or so, what are you doing on the show not talking football, Mike? No, this is a somewhat different, a different uh, shape of a ball, a different sport altogether, and I'm happy to announce that we are officially launching the Canadian Elite Basketball League, uh, the CBL, that will begin play in May of 2019, and it is going to bring professional basketball to Canada in a big way. So we're pumped about it. Uh, we know we have a daunting task ahead of us. We've uh, spent a considerable amount of time getting to the point to announce this launch. And uh, we have about another year to go and a lot of fun things to announce over the over the next coming year. And we are just uh, super excited, not only um, for the basketball community, but for, you know, regular, uh, you know, individuals and families who want to get out and need a good live game day experience and we will be bringing it to them starting in may throughout the summer months and uh yeah we are uh, we're pumped we'll have six teams to start and one right here in hamilton so six teams launching the first year edmonton fraser valley out in bc hamilton saskatoon niagara and guelph when you look at the six teams and the six cities uh what sticks out well, we, when we did this research, we, first of all, we wanted to be in the top 50 municipalities uh, in the country, and we wanted to make sure that we were in places that had strong um, you know, amateur basketball and association programs. And then we also wanted to work and uh, play in, in, uh, in great venues with, with uh, partners in, at the cities and economic development, um, you know, and, and just fans that really wanted uh, another avenue uh, of entertainment, especially in the summertime. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. We're, we're thrilled with the, the inaugural six teams uh, that will be starting. And then we're also open to growing the league and making it uh, bigger and better. And we'll do that. Uh, you know, selectively after careful consideration, but the where we are at today is um, is a really outstanding opportunity uh, to create something brand new and exciting. Mike Amos Conley here. Um, we've had a chance to talk a little bit about this, uh, sort of under wraps, um, and now it's nice to see this finally. Uh, released and see you be a part of it. Um, talk a little bit about when I look at these teams: Edmonton, Fraser Valley, Hamilton, Saskatoon, Niagara, Guelph. All of them have a CIS institution uh, in those cities. Um, yeah. I'm wondering. I'm sure this isn't a mistake, given that your Canadian content rules. There must be some willingness on your part to have a connection between the CIS and the CEBL. Can you talk about that a little bit? Definitely. Uh, first of all, I have no idea how they allowed you on the show, Amos. But uh, really I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, was, I want to say too. These guys don't realize. They don't realize that you and I used to play basketball all day long at Mac oh, a million years ago, all and day. how good you were. Oh, yeah, how good okay. you were at basketball. Yeah, no, I was but a good pretty good. I had no touch around the net, but uh, there I, no, we I think you chose the wrong buddy. sport. <laughs> you chose the wrong sport. Yeah. You uh, you bring up a great point. I mean, our our goal is to is to bring over, uh, you know, the best international players we can find and bring home and develop, you know, some of our top Canadian uh, and national players because I, I think there's a void that exists and a lot of our, our great players, whether they go to the NCAA or come out of U Sports, if they want to play pro ball, more often than not, they have to leave the country to do so. So. Uh, that void is huge, and, and working with you, sports, and, and all the member institutions to create an avenue for these, uh, you know, terrific athletes to move on professionally and remain in Canada is huge. And uh, we'll be working uh, closely with those organizations to, to make that work. But the more basketball we played in this country, the better. Uh, if you look at, you know, Canada as a country, we are, you know, leading the pack in so many areas. And yet, when you look at our the strength of our uh, you know, our basketball and the professional basketball, it, it, we're, we're well behind, you know, the international players in Europe and China and Australia, uh, so on and so forth. So we've got some room uh, to catch up. We've got some runway to do it. And, and hopefully this is just the catalyst for more and more basketball in the country. Mike Morelli joins us here on Marsh and Mellow, TSN 1150 Hamilton. He is the CEO of the CEBL. How's that sound, Mike? I get to call you the hey. CEO of the CEBL now. It's nice, man. 
not bad. I, I can do it. And listen, it comes down to the team you put together. And uh, yes. I've been fortunate that we were able to put together, you know, some some young up and coming execs on our on our league staff, and then some seasoned uh, veterans in the sports uh, business landscape. So, you know, uh, guys like Lee Genier, who had long runs with the Stampeders, and then uh, you know brought the uh, Saskatoon uh, Saskatchewan Rush to Saskatoon, and John Lash, who was involved with the Raptors back in '85. Glenn Young, who worked at IMG for 20 years, and then some youngsters like Josh Knuster and Nate Brady. And, you know, it's uh, it's a testament to their hard work as well. So, you know, I understand you're only as good as your team, and um, that's the same in, when you're running the business. The uh, the part of this that I, I love so much is the concept that, um, I, you know, I've been looking at basketball ratings, and again, the NBA, you can deem it to be as similar or as different um, as what you are embarking on this journey with the CEBL with, but uh, I've seen ratings for, you know, LeBron's Game 7 on Canadian television against the Pacers was the highest rated first round series game in like 15 years. And I've seen the regular season ratings that have been happening uh, on TSN throughout the year. Basketball popularity in this country, uh, everybody always wants to talk about, you know, soccer is expanding and what is football doing and where are we trending with the NFL and are people cutting cords and all of that. Regardless of what's happening with a lot of those different sports, it seems like Basketball, for some reason, whether it's north or south of the border, Canada or the United States, has become this anomaly where it's just staying popular and it's becoming increasingly ever more popular. How much of that, that recent trend, led to you wanting to be involved in something like this? Because it feels like the perfect time to try and do something like the CEBL. Yeah, no, you, you hit the nail on the head. The rise of basketball and popularity is huge, especially in this country. Uh, we certainly you know, can attribute some of that to what the Raptors have done, but... For, for as much as the Raptors are, you know, national in scope, they still are somewhat regional. So there's voids across the country for, you know, uh, pro basketball. And uh, we understand the NBA will always be the pinnacle, um, but uh, there are tens of thousands of uh, pro-style players uh, that don't make the NBA because there's only about 500 spots. So uh, we look at, you know, the opportunity to attract great players. We look at the opportunities to bring communities together uh, and wrap this huge entertainment package around uh, the sport of basketball, which if you go by, you know, driveways, you'll see nets up in the yard and guys shooting hoops and girls shooting hoops. Uh, because to play basketball is a pretty easy, seamless thing. You buy a ball, you put on some shorts, and you, and you shoot a shoot through a hoop. So um, that popularity, the coolness, the hipness, the the family friendly nature of basketball is really a lot of the fundamentals we looked at to making this uh, what it is and continue to growing this. Now, when you launch uh, this league this morning as CEBL, I look at. You know, other leagues that have tried and some have failed and some are kind of still going. What makes this league different? Well, I, you know, we, you have to learn from the mistakes of, of others and sometimes your own mistakes uh, personally. And you want to do all your research ahead of time so that when you do come out the gate that you're, you're well positioned to be successful. So what makes the CBL extremely successful and, and different from the rest is that we're taking a, uh, an approach that the league itself uh, and all the teams uh, will be completely and fully funded uh, for the foreseeable future. So there's no issue regarding, uh, you know, uh, revenues to, to get this going and get it off the ground. And in addition to that, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities out there uh, in these regions that continue to grow and to learn from some of the mistakes that have happened. So you have to take a, a big approach to it. You have to um, look at your business plan. You have to uh, know that you have to withstand, you know, the early years while you're getting the um, the league name out, the team names out, and you have to create value for for your fans. So uh, you have to price uh, properly. You have to, uh, you know, provide a, a, an entertainment value that will compete not only against the other sports but also against the people going to the movies or going out for dinner. So. You know, we're, we're going to be playing FIBA rules, which uh, really no other uh, league in Canada plays, which is great because it's fast, it's quick, and it's, it's exciting. Um, the players will be cleared uh, through FIBA, through Canada Basketball. We'll follow the, uh, you know, the referee requirements and protocol of Canada Basketball. We really want to, to be a partner uh, in this country to make this successful. And, you know, you, if, you, if you look and you do your research and you know where the pitfalls might be, then you're more prepared if those things ever do come up. Um, 
Mike, I know there's a, a concept with the WNBA in terms of when they schedule their season that they want to be able to make it possible for, for players in their league to also play in Europe. Uh, judging by your start date, May 2019, it looks like you're planning to play through the summer months. Is there a, a willingness or an idea there that you can provide opportunities for players to play in multiple leagues or, or at least give me some insight or give us some insight into why you chose that season schedule versus what is a typical basketball schedule, which is usually through the winter. Yeah, so I think perfect point, uh, Amos, is that the availability of players in the winter months is difficult because there are so many terrific leagues uh, internationally uh, and abroad that to attract, you know, uh, players during that time is, you know, it becomes uh, hard and, you know, players will go back and forth depending on the opportunities they have. Uh, with, with our FIBA rules and regulations and the playing in the spring-summer month, we hope to attract not only international players that, you know, are in that kind of downtime uh, to come to Canada to be able to experience the country and, and play basketball here, but, but more, not, not more importantly, but it, as equally as important, maybe a little bit more, would be trying to attract our Canadians back here. So ones that are playing overseas that come the summer months when they're off, they, they stay in Europe, they stay in Australia, they hang out for a bit because they have no real reason to come home. Well, we're giving them a reason. We're going to compensate them appropriately so their friends and family and their communities can, can get a chance to watch them play pro ball, you know, back home. Mike, thank you for the time this morning. We appreciate it. It's exciting stuff, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where it goes and doing the show with you tomorrow night. We're down at Tim Hortons Field from uh, 7.30 until 10 p.m. talking draft and CFL stuff. That's going to be great. Well, thanks, guys. Listen, always a pleasure. Uh, you, you know, Kyle and Marsh and, and uh, Amos, man, you made my day even better today, buddy. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mike. That-